Levi takes the credit for inventing riveted pants, the arcuate, and a slew of other things rival companies have been copying for over a century. But did they really invent belt loops? Let's find out. This is the 1922-501 episode, now on Den and Denim. Big shout out to Evan Gutierrez, my copper riveted member. Thank you, Patreon peeps, for all your support. If you want to get in on the action, it starts at only a dollar a month, and you get to see the episodes weeks early. Subscribes are always welcomed. Thanks a lot for watching, guys. Now on with the video. The 1920s were a time of economic expansion in America. The world had staved off a viral pandemic as well as a world war. New industries were laying out glimpses of the future. Of course, fashion is at the forefront of how each decade in the 20th century will define itself. Belts can date back 5,000 years. We don't have much evidence of the actual belts because they were made of organic fabrics, but the buckles are pretty much all that remains. However, these belts aren't of interest to us because they were only used for closing robes and coats. The oldest sign of a belt used to hold up a pair of pants with loops comes from 19th century baseball. The idea of taking a length of fabric, wrapping it around your waist, and tightening up your pants was beginning to evolve at the turn of the 20th century. Fashion historian Wayne James claims the first trousers with belt loops came in the 1908 Macy's catalog. We can see an ad from the Butte Miner featuring belt loops on riveted denim waist overalls in 1919. There's a pair of World War I U.S. Navy issued denim waist overalls with belt loops. Most sources date 1922 as the first year of seeing mass produced belt loops. This would have been on Levi's 501 jeans. By November 1922, one Virgil Quirk. Termas took out a patent on belt loops. If you're asking who the heck that is, that's because it didn't do him much good. Each company could have fixed the loops in their own method, and by the end of the decade, belt loops were commonplace on most men's casual wear pants. Did Levi's really invent belt loops? Short answer, no. Levi's did not invent belt loops. Once Levi's put it on their jeans, rival companies followed. Well, there is an added ingredient to the popularity boost. Meet one of Levi's first celebrity icons, Ken Cooper. Cowboy Ken Cooper wore a pair of 501s with a belt when he won the 1928 Colorado Rodeo. Mr. Cooper would go on to star as a backup player in Gene Autry films, portraying the brute or gentle giant in over 50 Western films from 1930 to 1950, becoming an inspiration to the next generation of Western stars, all clad in 501s. Levi's would repay the favor by awarding championship belts at the rodeo circuit. Once again, the belt was an ornamental symbol thanks to the buckle. Every cowboy liked to show off his buckle it was that or his holster. Using a belt allowed you to wear your pants lower to the waistline. Now when I say lower to the waistline, I mean somewhere below the armpit. Remember, these are still made to wear a lot higher than modern jeans. If you let your happy trail out in 1922, they'd shoot you. Honestly, I wear them at the waist and it's fine. Love it. They fit a little snug to measurement so you can upsize half a size or just get your true size and suck it in. Uh, you probably want to use all those fasteners, so you probably want to upsize that size. Remember, rigid shrinks one or two sizes. But the main issue is how balloon wide the leg room is. I feel like I'm wearing a glider suit. If you have large thighs, then this is your pair. These jeans are made of 11 ounce Cone Mills Plain. 
silvage denim, otherwise known as white silvage. 12 ounce after washing. Do back pockets with exposed rivets. Clocking in at over 9 centimeters, this is the deepest watch pocket I have ever seen. Crotch rivet. Two horse leather patch or cloth patch for 201s. Single needle stitched arcuate. And of course, all three fasteners cinch, suspender buttons, and of course, belt loops. Of course, it comes in a rigid model. Rigid will get you that PPIE, the Panama Pacific International Exposition. It's like the proto flasher. A guarantee tag, and then you can shrink them to fit. For the distressed variations, we have rag top. Light blue distressed, scuffing but no major rips. All fasteners and patch still there. The leather patch looking oddly new. Saddle sore, pretty much the cowboy hair here. Dark blue with strong whiskers and splotchy distression stains. All fasteners and patch still there. This unknown pair with green rivets. Heavily distressed pair with copper rivets turning that beautiful patina green. Cut off cinch. Coffee cup stain on the back pocket. I'm also adding the 1920s 201s here. They come in rigid and distressed models. Now there's no real limited edition 1922 model, but there is Stumpy. This vault archive recreation is dated between 1901 and 1922, but the tag reads 22501, so I'm gonna put it in this episode. Stumpy is perhaps the reason there are belt loops. This pair is a limited edition of only 222 pairs. The cinch is extra long so that you can tie it. It's got beautiful whiskers on the back knees and white paint specks plastered from crotch to ankle. And this pair also comes with a denim belt for the extra special collection, an original rodeo championship belt. If you want to see all the LVC variations of belts, Check out the belts episode. Nineteen twenty-two marks the year when belt loops were first used. Belts began appearing on fine clothing soon after World War One, and eventually became important to younger working men. Although belt loops were added, the suspender buttons remained till nineteen thirty-seven, and the cinch till nineteen forty-two. The 1922-501 jean offered the best of both worlds. One could maintain the cinch and use suspenders or eliminate both and wear a belt. Younger men cut off the cinch in order to wear a belt, while more traditional users kept the cinch and wore suspenders. Retaining both ways of wearing jeans ensured that more people could be persuaded to try Levi's jeans, many for the first time. Around 1915, L.S. and Co. started hanging a small paper label from one of the suspender buttons on the waist overalls. This label, which was carried over into the early 1920s, advertised the fact that L.S. and Co. had won prizes at the Panama Pacific International Exposition held in San Francisco in 1915. The 1922 is a pretty symbolic year for the evolution of the 501 with the addition of belt loops and the full integration into Cone Mills denim from Amaskiag. They ain't the easiest pair to find and I wish they would do them again, maybe in 2024 or so. It'd be nice to see a cool bootlegging catalog with the whole 1920s theme. I think it's nice to have a pair of jeans with all three fasteners, a real belt and suspenders approach with the cinch just to make sure. This is the cowboy jean. It's funny because it's a cowboy jean in retrospect by the addition of the belt loops, but which has become so iconic in the 20th century, particularly through film or through rodeo circuits. You know, there are a pair of jeans you can really make their, your own. They're unique in a lot of features. Be aware of the oversized baggy legs if you like that. 
Let me know what you guys think of the 1922 501s or 201s. There's an accompanying video talking about the LVC belt. You can watch that here or watch another 501 video. I'm Dan. This is Dan and Denim. Love your jeans.